hello, I want to make a video against psychology versus reality. And I've touched on this in other videos. And the you world distinction, obviously, I've pointed out that you're still part of this reality as a whole. You're still part of this reality, regardless of the fact that there's something inside of you. There's this neurology. There's this thing that's process leading to this ethereal thing that we call perception and projection of value, this awareness of everything around us, the awareness of awareness. I'm doing something, I have control, I have this idea, this perception of free will, I'm moving, I, I can move within those confines in which I have restraints to a certain extent to a point, and understanding that I have control of my fingers and this and that and the other thing, and about control, there's not a me, there's a me brain, there's not an I, there's a me brain, there's things moving forward, the projection, why am I not someone else, and the me, I'm not someone else because there's no me, and this idea that there's some me, it's just a matter of memories and things like that, based on you con collecting memories based on this crude mechanism that's causing life to exist. And the crude mechanism is allowing you to get all these things, the mechanism causing things, based on experiences interacting with this environment, memories, things, interacting with, say, looking at the wall, I'm interacting, I'm having a mutual relationship, a symbiotic relationship with the environment, sort of like the symbiotic relationship between um, ingesting carbon dioxide and, I mean, uh, ingesting oxygen and, uh, and exhaling, um, inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide, the symbiotic relationship. And there is a, there is a distinction. And then almost like saying it's all in your head, it's all in your head, all these things are in your head. Obviously, they're in your head, all your delusions and all your, it's in your head, but it means something. But once you realize it's just a projection in your head, that's when you start realizing outside the box. That's when you start realizing exactly how the mechanism is working. And you can look beyond the mechanism at that point. And you cannot be fooled by your own fantasies. Even though you can still indulge in your fantasies, you can still be caught up in the game. Um, it can still It's just a little less dominant in you when you're understanding it in the exact same way. Um, so when you're understanding something in a different way, when you recognize outside, looking for, down at the maze, or looking outside, and looking in the hamster, inside the cage, moving inside the wheel, watching it move, inside this closed environment, and then you just see... Um, how everything's having an effect on each other based on the wheel moving or whatever it may be, a uh, better analogy to that. And it comes to the um, idea that there's still an interaction that's happening. Your psychology is part of the interaction based on this physical interaction, this brain that's part of this physical world that can, if my brain can be thrown against the wall and splattered against the wall, and it's an interaction based on this brain causing this, si this phenomenon, this ethereal psychological phenomenon. And it still exists, and it's about it's about being on and it working, things working, having a processor it's like a computer, and it's a it's a chip, and it still works. It just has these things, these electrical things causing circuitry that have an association. Why does a circuitry? It's a bunch of numbers, ones and zeros. Why does a circuitry cause all these complex things? And it's just our application and understanding of these complex things, like these things on, like the computer programs, the things that we see on the computer are just made up of different programs, or different ones and zeros put together, or whatever. It's like binary code and just different things put together and that make up a whole image or that create an idea of an image. And it's like this idea, this dissociation based on this internal logic of how does ones and zeros in this electrical circuitry create, um, and like almost begging the question why, a new revelation, new revelation. What, what, what causes these things, what causes that code to create? Um, these things are like what causes this code, almost no way applying it, in this process, this code, the code of synapses firing, these atoms working the way they are. What causes those things to have me project onto this reality? And it's just our, our perception of the final outcome, the final, the, 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 what we see on the computer screen, and, and as opposed to the process seeing how those things lead to the computer screen. And that creates a different logic and understanding how the process works and leading from numbers on a computer chip processing to uh, an actual final process that leads to something. And it's a very simple process. It's just a bunch of boxes and different programs overlapping each other based on programs and di dimensions and things like that, causing a bunch of different geometry to overlap and this and that. And that's exactly pixels on a, com on, on a computer screen or a screen or how you view things and the processing and this and that and the other thing and interactions. So the processing is what makes everything matter. But everything on the outside is what causes this matter to have any meaning, which by experiencing things on the outside. So it creates the meaning too. Um, so that creates the meaning as this interaction. So we need the interaction, we need the outside interaction, sort of like the deprivation. We need the outside deprivation to create the interaction, this meaning, sort of like we need the brain, the neurology to have any meaning looking um, and interacting with the world around us. So we're interacting with the doorknob, but we need our neurology to have the perception of being aware of me pulling the doorknob. Uh, at least wired in the same way it is now being fully self-aware, not living in the moment, not being like a two-year-old child where you're just sort of 
zooming by and you're not even really aware of everything that's happening. It's just sort of memory and pick up memory or almost applying a memory that you have as an adult to something uh, as a two-year-old and see how that would apply but it doesn't apply in the same way because you can't have a 20-year-old memory and a, a two-year-old unless the two-year-old has a 20-year-old tw memory or a, tw a memory of a 20-year-old or an adult and therefore it's just he has a more mature memory earlier than you did um, so it's one of those things that you can't really it's sort of like creating that kind of conundrum creating conundrums or paradoxes and things like that and that's all you're doing is making things up, creating contrivances, contriving a, a situation or contriving an event and then calling it a conundrum or, or, or a paradox because you contrive two contradictory ideas and trying to manipulate them to seem like there's some kind of unsolvable mystery where it crashed but didn't crash, or it's white but black at the same time. Well, if it's white, it's white. If it's black, it's black. You can't have black and white. You're just putting white is black and black is white. Well, that's just the way you described it. You can describe it however you want and say white's black and black is white, but it doesn't mean it's one, it's one, it's one, it's either one. It just means you're putting two contrary ideas, using your semantics to manipulate the situation and the thought experiment and the contrivance, and using that to your advantage to try to explain away how things have absolutely no meaning. How things can be confusing beyond our comprehension. No, <laughs> not really. Sort of like our boundaries describe how small things can, it doesn't matter when there's boundaries um, in this close, in the system. As a whole, there's boundaries that are created. And it doesn't matter how many half steps you take to get to the next line. There's a boundary. You walk to the end. You're contriving the half step thing. Who cares? That's not even meaningful um, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, your psychology is part of reality. And this reality is projected and you see it because it's your psychology you're seeing it because your psychology is part of this reality and you're seeing it because um, your reality is interacting with your psychology which is part of this reality and your reality is part of the psychology but your psychology is just viewing and interacting with reality um, so there is even so sort of like saying there's a distinction oh it's just a projection in your head well obviously but a projection in my head is all I have I mean, it's all I have. That's the thing that drive. That's the thing that moves me. That's, well, that really moves me. It's the thing that moves me forward. That obviously, that's the way things existed because things existed, and it led to this awareness thing, and so on and so forth. And this awareness of my own being and moving around is what is the thing. That's the thing that jeopardy. That's the thing that means anything. And it's there's still uh, there's a distinction, but there's also not a distinction because you're still part of this reality. You're still part of one thing, uh, regardless of the fact that. Um, it's a projection in your mind, and it's about recognizing that projection, that you make that distinction, where it's all just a projection in your head, it's all just inside your head, and that's all it is, and what you need to realize is, even though it's everything you have, what's inside your head is still just mumbo-jumbo crapo, it doesn't really have much meaning beyond, um, especially when you're just imagining something, a painful hallucination, you can still go beyond it, it's still, um, it doesn't mean much once you recognize that it's just an hallucination when you're trying to escape, say, a negative hallucination or whatever it is, a delusion. Um, but sometimes you can be trapped by the mechanism when you don't have as much awareness of the mechanism that's causing you to have this painful experience or this experience that you're being gamed by in the game itself. Um, so, yeah. There, there's a distinction, but the distinction doesn't matter. Um, it, there's a distinction, but the distinction does matter. But it's still inside. The distinction is superficial, but it still means something. And the distinction is um, still means something. But you, once you look past it, you recognize the silliness of the distinction that you're making, or the non-distinction that you're making, because it still is a distinction that you need to make in understanding how everything is working. There is a distinction, regardless of what you think, um, between the you and your psychology and your delusions and what you want and what you need or what you feel like you need projecting what you want in the future and projecting what you thought you shouldn't have had in the past is still just a projection of value and obviously that matters because all you have is your projection your awareness your perception your body your feelings your feelings for others everything interacting but it's still just your projection you can recognize the stupid parts of this mechanism working are very frivolous pointless and you shouldn't let them get to you but obviously letting them get to you is almost in a way beyond our control and at that point um, it creates the purpose and the meaning in our life to drive us forward to fight to run away from something 
it, it gives us the motivation without because without that motivation of something to chase and something to run away from sort of like the killer chasing you but you also chasing going to different food uh, restaurants or different whatever you want whatever desire you can think of but also a killer chasing and weighing those two different things and considering one being irrational not being irrational choosing which one you find more survival or getting what you want before you get killed um, sooner than later and letting yourself survive long enough but not getting what you want surviving long enough but not getting what you want surviving longer but not getting what you want or getting what you want but sort of dying uh, say immediately afterwards so what's the point well Live longer, be less happy, or live shorter and not experience the happiness that you acquired. Yeah. Very fun and interesting. And a lovely game that we're playing of gambling, choosing between crap and crap two. Crap one and crap two. Option one and option two. Crap one and crap two. That's all our experience is crap option one and crap option two. I wonder. Rock in a hard place. Between two mountains, between two brick walls, which one should I choose? That's right. You have to choose one. Or you can sit here, but you're sit you're choosing even if you're just sitting here. It has nothing to do with movement. It has to do with the idea of living and experiencing the game. Like I said, there's no context beyond this game. And the only time it has context is when there's a blood trail leading me from behind. And the only time there is no context, and the time there is con there is no context, is the time that you want there to be context. The only time there's no blood trail be left behind is when there is no context. When you're asleep, you don't know it. You wake up and you're right back in the context again. You, you sleep, you're away. Then you're right, right when you blink your eye, it's like blinking your eyes and you're awake again. Or sometimes when you have a process of slowly waking up, it's like, oh, you wake again and you go to sleep. That, that nice where you're going in and out of sleep, that's nice. Um, but obviously the context is it's about going to sleep and that's the thing you're looking for. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. Oh, you're awake. Oh, and then you get up and, you know, six hours later you're tired after um, uh, stroking off, uh, eating, going to work, and going to the bathroom, and then eating again, and then taking a dump. I mean, just repeating the process over and over again. The superficial process over and over and over again. I want to have some kids, too. And so they can experience it over, and they can come to the conclusion, and then they can have more kids, they can have some kids, and they can, they can come to their own conclusion, and they can have some kids. So have some kids because you're super duper? Yeah, I'm sure you're super duper. Um, no, no excuse. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for any of that. Um, so I think that's all I need to say. Um, this, there's nothing, thin air, <whistles> nothing more, um, nothing less, oh wait, meaningless, yeah, except for the deprivation that we feel, um, so, yeah, nothing more, so thank you, and until next time, um, there's nothing more, yeah, so until next time, so thank you, and